Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Tomb Raider 2013. I ended the last episode hanging off of this ledge with like a guy about to look at us. Uh, sadly it saved in a weird place. Basically I came up, I assassinated him and he died and then that's where we are now. So uh, I thought I'd hang off the ledge just to let you guys see uh, kind of the progression there. Uh, before we turn this corner and get into a bit of a fight with some guys... Uh, there's an interesting way that you can fight these dudes if you really want to uh, by coming back here and there's some lanterns on the floor. Uh, I don't know, I found this on my first time. I was like, why are there lanterns here? What, what, what could you possibly set on fire with them? Turns out I think they're just there to fight these enemies because this is one of those little weird interim areas. Uh, but as you can see there, I died. Um, <laughs> so it's not too useful of a tactic, I just kind of wanted to show it off. Uh, this is actually kind of a hard fight. I don't know whether it's just because I'm a little bit rusty with the game at the moment and it is hard mode, but I, I, I don't know. It's just a little bit difficult because, uh, as you're going to see in a second, a guy can shoot you. Like, where I'm stood, a guy's going to shoot me through that, like, stuff where I can't even see him. And it really sucks. That guy that just ran across in the background. Look at where he can shoot you from. That's That was kind of irritating. Uh, and that can get you killed. I, I do remember my first run through of this game, dying there quite a few times. Um, but in general, if you just watch out for that, use your favourite weapon. You should be fine. I'm trying to use, like, the machine gun, I think, a little bit more on this playthrough. Because I didn't get, like, all the machine gun achievements and stuff. My first go through, and I figure if I'm going to help here, I may as well go for those achievements here. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, this area, there's not too much to do, so don't worry about pickups too much. I kind of come up into this little bit of wrecked plane above me. I'm also wondering if it, you can use those barrels to uh, somehow deal with the enemies if you can get up there quick enough. But yeah, I came up into this expecting some secrets or something. But uh, you're in an unknown area, so there is no secrets. And this isn't somewhere I believe, question mark, you can come back. I don't know, you might be able to come back here, but what happened in the cutscene on our way here? Did the, the rope snap, or did Lara just fall into the building and it collapsed at the end of the last episode? I don't really remember, but yeah, as you can see there, location unknown. Uh, there's a very nice view over here, which you can enjoy uh, before... No I've got to cross. Yes, Lara, you've got to cross before um, shit hits the fan, shall we say. Uh, so it looks like it's just a little river that you've got to cross, which should be fine. And the idea here is that you're going to go from pole to pole to pole. I'm actually 100% not sure whether I'm in control of the game right now. Um, it's one of those weird places where it could be a cutscene, it could be something I'm actually kind of interacting with. But this pole, sadly, does not support our weight, which I'm going to come back to in a bit as well, because Roth says something to us. Uh, and we end up in one of these slidey sequences. Yay, more Falling Raider 2013. Earlier on in the LP, I mentioned to you guys that I was going to show you the most gruesome death animation in this game, in my opinion. And this is it. Okay, I'm going to deliberately get myself killed in a second after we shoot through this. This bit here. Watch. Look at the top left corner. Ow. Oh my god, and I've got to say, like, this isn't a very long sequence where you're falling through the river, but on my first playthrough, I died here over and over and over again, and Lara kept getting impaled. It was not fun at all. It was one of those situations where I was kind of upset to die, not just because I'd lost my progress, but because it just looked genuinely horrific every time on the screen. I get kind of lucky here, though, uh, and I only uh, die the once, and it was only to show you guys as well, so I don't know, maybe it's not too hard. You end up in this little plane, though, and a nice cutscene starts. Which is a very similar to, actually, um, the last generation of Tomb Raider games, where you end up in a plane with the cracking glass and stuff. I'm not sure whether it's a full, uh, like, a callback or what, but I think it's pretty cool. If you guys watched my previous LP, you might recognise this bit. See, and we're leaning for something. Last time it was the relic. This time it's the parachute. And down we go. Now we have to press button one to pull, and the first parachute doesn't work. I think that's a really cool touch, so we have to use the emergency, right? So we have to use button two to pull for the emergency uh, parachute. Um, which I, I couldn't find on my keyboard. And I'm going to cut it out here, but I died here a lot of times. I just couldn't find button two. It turns out it was left shift. That is still a, uh, like a thorn in my side of an annoyance of this game, like with the port. But yeah, it's a very cool touch, I think. I really like that they do this because most people don't think about that. You know, sometimes it uh, happens in movies, but this is the first time really I've seen that happen in a game. It probably has happened in games, just ones that I've missed. 
Uh, but yeah, the first one doesn't work. You get the emergency. And we have another cool kind of falling sequence. Mechanically, it's pretty much the same as when we were on the river. But uh, you get some really nice visuals here. And we're like flying through. Again, though, another gruesome death animation. I didn't actually mean to show you guys that one. But I, I guess I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, a very awesome death animation there. Oh, where you get impaled by the branch. Kind of similar to the previous one. I think it's just because the previous one is like a rusty metal bar going through Lara's head that just makes it that much worse for me. You see people get impaled all the time, but not quite in that fashion. Uh, and certainly not in this game until that moment. So, yeah. Um, I should mention to you guys, you've probably picked up on it maybe already. Uh, I'm doing this episode post-commentary. Why? I don't know. I just thought it'd be kind of interesting because... Um, I couldn't quite remember what was coming up on this next little bit of the game, so I thought, hey, why don't I play it first, and I'll try a post-commentated episode. I haven't done a, a video like this for a long time, at least a year, and it suddenly just hit me about an hour ago. I was like, I haven't done and filmed something like this for a long time, so why not? So yeah, uh, th this won't be a staple of the future, as you've noticed, the episode's only about 15 minutes long, um, but hey, it helps us keep the pace up, at least for this one. Uh, but yeah, so we finished that sequence, and we've moved very far across the island. Uh, very far indeed, again, which I'll get back to in a sec. Um, but Lara's kind of just coming to terms with it, and I guess from the fall, and from all the branches, like falling out of the ugly tree, she uh, she's kind of reopened her wound from the start of the game. Which again, I think is a really nice touch, because... It would have been easy to just have her kind of wounded at the start and that's just a bit of shock factor and then they move on and then they want her wounded again later and they've completely forgotten about that thing they did at the start. It's easy to forget I think as like developers, as large game companies like you've got so many people working on the one project. The guys that were making this section of the game or you know panning out this section of the story perhaps might not have had all that context of stuff that's gone on all around the rest of the game especially for the finished product like you know these things can be iterated on time and time and time again so I think it's pretty cool that they do go back to that wound it could have been quite simple to have just sort of factored into the design I know but I quite like it anyway what I'm showing you there is we're in this new weird place this is the shanty town if you want to turn around and run there's the, like the road just ends there's a hint that maybe there's some tires blocking the way or something which I always found was a kind of a, a flimsy excuse as to why the road just ends but uh, yeah I thought I'd show that off because that's what I did in my first playthrough like as well I was like I'm wounded I'm not going into this area obviously infested with enemies but we see a helicopter in the distance and Lara thinks there might be some supplies on board what about the other one no nothing gotta keep looking all right around the chopper Oh dear, and they're going to be looking down the chopper too. Uh, every little thing we do in this sequence, we are wounded, we can't jump, we can't explore the shanty town as we usually would, which is very cool as well, which I'll get back to next episode. Uh, so all we have, all we really have as an option is to sort of sludge our way through these areas here with corpses and that dead moose on the left. I don't know what you're talking about. Please. You are lying. I know you escaped from him. Please! I don't... Please, I need to loosen your tongue. Tell me! And there we go. I thought I'd be quite there. That's quite an atmospheric area, and we haven't been quiet for very long in this one. Molly lost his temper. Man. <laughs> Any sign of the old man? Nope. He's a tough bastard, but he won't get far. What about the other ones? We got him locked up in the cage. I don't understand. Why is Father Matthias keeping them alive? Because of the girl, they were trying to rescue her. Matthias might want to keep him alive as leverage. God damn. I hope she's the one. We've been waiting so long. We'll know soon enough. Ceremonies at sunset. So they kind of set a time scale now, which is interesting to me because they just mentioned that our friends are in the cave. So that's going to come up later. And that's like a long time later in the game, it feels like. Uh, so I think it's kind of cool now that they set up a time scale. The ceremony to sacrifice our friend Sam is at sunset. 
Uh, which is, uh, you know, considering that we, we have no idea where that's going on at all. Um, it's a long way from that temple we were at before. And we're, like, wounded as hell right now in, obviously, a fight. This is actually a worrying fight, too, because, uh, as I say, we're so injured. We don't have much movement. We can't dodge around without hurting ourselves and stuff. Um, especially when this guy comes flying at me, I panic like mad and, like, miss all of my shots, which is ridiculous. Uh, but, yeah, so they've set up a time scale, and it's interesting to, for me on, on, like, a replay of this game to think of it like that because it, it's a long time before we get any kind of conclusion. Um, and I guess the, the sort of game time. It's weird because you, do, you uh, like, I look at that as them being unrealistic and thinking, oh, well, it's ages. How could it, that only be, like, one evening? It's already sunset or, you know, the ceremony's at sunset and it already looks like it's getting a little bit dark right now already. And yet we have so much gameplay. But then in truth, you know, you could probably play that in two, three hours. Uh, but I guess time just moves fast in video games, I suppose. Anyway, we open up that thing. We can at least salvage stuff. I uh, get that next shotgun part. And Lara tells us that that hurt. There you go. So as I try to jump, demonstrating there to you guys that we cannot climb anything. So instead, we have to just kind of slowly move our way around. We're trying to get to the helicopter for supplies. Another really nice view off on the right. And this is a cool moment too, like having to walk across that beam. It's like, well, I'm injured. I can't do most acrobatic stuff. Can I make it across this? And that's kind of cool. That reminded me a lot of that original log we crossed too. Uh, I don't know about anyone else that played this, but that did make me think of that straight away. And I thought, oh yeah, I remember I remember struggling across these. And we have another fight. This like little uh, pathway here is a cool one too. Because this is something that is quite well telegraphed that you're going to have a fight here. You've got these little boxes for cover. And again, you're injured. I, I just like this whole kind of uh, section. You're in a new area, an unknown area. A place where enemies can kind of peek out at you. That dude was terrible in a fight. I mean, what? Just staring at me for ages? He didn't come out at all got a killer headshot though as i said i'm trying to use the machine gun as much as possible there's this little like decking here which i don't know looks like maybe you should dive off that makes me kind of want the parachute again um but of course we don't have it because it got utterly destroyed it was an old world war ii parachute <laughs> which clearly didn't have much life left in it we're gonna come around this corner and we've got the helicopter here just next to us one more guy to shoot out uh, and as you can see, I missed this on my first playthrough, kind of a dumb thing, but you actually can see the white rope there on the helicopter, telegraphing to you that you need to use the bow. Now, we've already got two firing methods for the bow. We've got regular firing and we've got the rope shot. Now, we're about to get our third. This is what I'm talking about with lots of different variations for the weapons you get. That I've said oh so much in this let's play. Uh, but it's going to be a long cutscene, so enjoy, guys. And hopefully we can get ourselves patched up. Also, I kind of thought she was going to throw up in that box on my first playthrough, I don't know. Sorry. Alright, so we've got a lighter. That's all she's got to work with. So she's going to cauterize the wound. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's too much pain for me to really comprehend with my, my sheltered first world life. But people always scream so bad in films and stuff. Like when they're cauterizing wounds. Like the first time I remember really seeing it and understanding what was going on when I was watching Lost. And they like cauterize someone's wound with gunpowder. They put gunpowder in and then like spark it up. But I don't know. It seems like I, I understand the concept of how it heals you. And I'm guessing having an open flesh wound like that doesn't feel too pleasant 99% of the time anyway. So, I don't know. I can't relate too much to it. I feel like, yeah, you just get it over with. I feel like I'd be pretty good if I had a really bad wound that I needed to, like, burn shut. Because I don't comprehend how bad it would hurt until after I'd done it. And then I'd probably never want to do it again. But, okay. So, Lara sees these three items lined up in a nice way. And she has an idea. Fire arrows. These are very cool items. Roth, can you hear me? Roth? Lara, are you okay? I'm 
fine. You don't sound fine to me. I'm fine, Roth. Where are you, girl? I'm in some kind of shanty town near the Fortify Palace. I'm still coming down the hill. How did you get there so fast? Long story. I can see the town from here. Are you near that large gate? I'm heading towards it. It's the outside. Oh, shit. There! Okay, so we have a new toy to play with, guys, um, and it's a pretty cool one. We're going to get Ambush. This is actually one of the harder sequences in the game, I've got to say, but uh, it's one of the fun ones. So I will see you that for that one next time, guys. Have a great day, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. And it will be regular commentary, I promise.